What's up Ocean, you got Mac here. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to use Swampert in less than 10 minutes. If you guys are excited, make sure to stick around and of course leave a like and leave me a comment on letting me know which Pokemon you wanna see next as well. Let's do it. As always, we'll be covering the Pokemon stats, move pool, abilities, some potential items, some potential teammates, some really bad teammates, some team examples, and then of course this place in the metagame. And that'll be both for single Smogon and for Draftly. Now Swampert is the first starter Pokemon I'm covering in this series. And the reason for it is because you all voted for it on my Twitter. So if you guys wanna vote on the next Pokemon, you can do so by following me on Twitter. There's a link in the description. Did you guys know that Swampert used to be one of my least favorite Pokemon to use? It's true. And honestly, the reason for the change is because of one new move. Flip turn, but we'll cover more of the moves later. For now, let's talk about its stats. Looking at Swampert's stats, it's really good all around. You have 100 base HP with 90 in both defenses, 110 in the attack with 85 special attack. Its speed is a little lackluster at base 60, but it's super well-rounded and can do a myriad of different things. It can be offensive, it can be defensive, it can be a bulky sweeper, it can do pretty much anything under the sun because it is a starter Pokemon with such a well-rounded distribution. Even though its speed is pretty bad at base 60, it is fast enough to catch some opponents off guard if you're running a faster Swampert or even a Choice Scarf set. And its special defense is going to be kind of important here because even though grass is four times effective against it, you're still able to take some non-stab grass attacks because of your amazing bulk and your ability to run so many different items. Let's talk more about Swampert's typing here. Swampert is the water and ground type, and that's a really amazing typing. It only has one weakness, that is to grass types. And even though it's four times weak to those grass types, as I said before, you're able to take some non-stab grass attacks because Swampert's bulk is just that amazing. On top of that, it has some really amazing defensive synergies with Pokemon like Fairy types because you do resist both the Fairy's weaknesses. You resist Poison, you resist Steel, but you also resist Fire, and you also resist Rock. On top of that, you have an immunity to Electric. That's so important to have whether you're playing in singles or you're playing in draft league. Now, even though Swampert is only weak to grass, or technically weak to grass, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Freeze Dry. Now, Freeze Dry is a move that hits water types super effectively, even though it is an ice type attack. That means Swampert does take four times effective damage from Freeze Dry because it is water and ground. That really does suck, but again, Freeze Dry is not the most powerful move in the game. So depending on the Pokemon firing it off, you can actually take the hit, which is really, really nice, and then flip turn out of there. Obviously it does lack recovery, so flip turning out of there may not be the best choice, but speaking of flip turn and recovery, let's go ahead and jump into its move pool. Swampert's move pool is really good. It has four moves loss syndrome a lot of the time because there are so many solid moves you want to run on it. Nothing really stands out though. The best ones you're going to see are flip turn, stealth rocks, you're going to see scald, yawn or toxic are pretty common on there as well. Body press for defensive sets. On top of that, you have mirror coat and counter depending on which Pokemon you want to lure in and fire back and attack from. And other than that, you have some really standard good moves. Earthquake, Icy Wind or Ice Punch, you have access to Bulk Up, Low Kick, Sludge Wave for those Tapu Bulus or those Whimsicott that are going to come in on you, and of course Rest, which can be really nice if you're running a Chesto Berry. Swampert's diverse physical and special move pool allows it to really effectively run an Assault Vest pretty much anytime it needs to, so you don't need to run your Toxics, your Yawns, or even your Stealth Rocks because other Pokemon on the team can fill that role and Swampert can just be a general catch-all against pretty much any Pokemon outside of grass types. Moving on to its abilities, Swampert's are kind of meh. You have Torrents and you have Damp. Now, the reason I say they're meh is because compared to other starter Pokemon like Speedboost Blaziken or Contrary Snivy or Sheer Force for Alligator, Damp is just whatever. It's really solid, mostly in the Smogon tier. And the reason for that is because you can potentially, um, well, negate a explosion from a lead Landris that wants to just sack itself off after it gets up rocks. You can be really solid against something like, I guess, uh, a Blacephalon going for Mind Blown, but you resist the hit already. So most of the time, you're going to be using Torrent to get the one and a half times boost when you're 33% or lower on HP. Its abilities aren't bad per se, but it's definitely one of the lower points for Swampert. When so many other Pokemon have so many amazing abilities, Swampert is just kind of iffy. If it got Swift Swim like its Mega Evolution, it'd be great, but this is not a guide on the Mega Evolution. Moving on to Swampert's items, it has a lot of them that it can use really, really well. Leftovers is a great choice. You have a ton of bulk, a ton of HP, you can get back a lot of recovery pretty much every turn. Pair that with Protect or Arrest or whatever, you're going to be in a great shape. There's Rocky Helmet. Swampert resists so many different types, and most of those types are physical, so they go for whether it's a Poison Jab or a Knockoff or a, I don't know, an Iron Head. Fire Blast, uh, not Fire Blast, Flare Blitz is a physical attack move. Those things are all resisted and Swampert can then do damage back to them, which is really nice for the rest of your team, especially when you can flip turn out of there in a slow flip turn to get into momentum. After that, Rindoberry makes a lot of sense against Pokemon that is four times weak to grass type attacks. Rindoberry can protect it if you need to take that one powerful grass type attack and get momentum in a situation where you can't really afford to make a prediction. 
There's access to assault vest, I mentioned it before. Its coverage is so good, it can easily run minus speed nature to boost either its defense or special defense while keeping both its attacking stats intact. There's also a choice band or a choice scarf. Choice band Swampert is insane. 110 attack with a choice band with torn boost, flip turn, waterfall, liquidation, earthquake, whatever. It's gonna hit so damn hard. And then finally, a chesto berry. That's really good, mostly if you're dealing with a Swampert that's gonna be running rest. That's really the only time you'd run it. But uh, rest allows Swampert to get back a second chance at taking hits from your opponent. Looking at some sets here, I have two of them I'm showing here on screen. One of them is a physically defensive set with Earthquake, Flip Turn, Toxic, or Yawn, and then Stealth Rock. Really, that third slot with Toxic or Yawn can be a, fl a flex spot, can do quite a different thing. Damp is there because you want to be able to take hits and take the explosion that might come your way from something like a Lee Landorus. But there's also something like a specially defensive set which runs Torrent in this instance. Again, it doesn't matter if you run Torrent or Damp in the situation, it depends on what you're expecting to see. But again, Rocks, Earthquake, Roar is a really solid move, and of course Flip Turn is what you need to get Swampert's momentum into your bigger threats. Looking at its partners, let's start with Smogon. We're looking at Pokemon like Ferrothorn or Heatran. These Pokemon four times resist the grass attacks that are coming Swampert's way. They also get access to hazards, so Swampert doesn't have to do that role, which is very nice. And these Pokemon together cover the majority of the competitive metagame. They resist so many different types together and can put in so much power because they can both be defensive, but also put in work offensively on top of that. As for Draft League, we're looking at the DraftLeague.nl website as usual. We're looking at Pokemon like Corviknight or Dragapult, Tapu Koko, Celesteel are all up there on the list. Now, personally, I don't like Corviknight as a pairing, but that's because I don't like Cor Corviknight in general, but it does resist four times at the grass of attacks. So it's, it's fine, I guess. But the common thing that we see in these Pokemon is that slow momentum into these broken Pokemon like Celesteela, Coco, Dragapult is really, really nice. And that's one of the things that Swampert does best. If it didn't have access to Flip Turn, it definitely would not be paired as well with these Pokemon as it is right now. Now, what about me? What do I like about Swampert? What do I pair with Swampert? Well, I really like the combination of Swampert with Moltres. Moltres is fantastic. On top of that, we're looking at Pokemon like Rotom Heat. Rotom Heat is really good to pair with Swampert. They form a really good Volturn core. And then you have Victini. Again, a really powerful Pokemon that can really take advantage of those grass types that Swampert is going to force in to try and beat them. And then Victini can fire off some insanely powerful attacks, whether it's Blue Flare or V Create or whatever. It's going to be hitting so damn hard. All three of those Pokemon are really good defensive pivots that can form an amazing Volturn core with Swampert. And it's really solid because when you pair them with huge threats like Urshifu or Mew or Dragapult, it is insanely difficult to beat. And FYI, I have a guide on those three Pokemon already on the channel, so make sure to check them out if you haven't already. Another Pokemon that I really like to pair with Swampert is Clefable. Clefable can keep it healthy with Wish, it can teleport into it, it can get a hazard support, it can use knockoff. Support options between Swampert and Clefable are really, really nice, and they cover each other extremely well. Now for some bad pairings. You really don't want to pair Swampert with other water ground type Pokemon. Pokemon like Gastrodon or Seismitoad or Quagsire, they don't really fit well because they have the same overarching weakness, which is so prominent. They all do pretty much the same thing anyways to get recovery, to get access to uh, to to rock. So it's really the same thing, but in general, you don't want to pair them. You want to stay away from that. Other water types, sure, but those ones, I wouldn't go for it. You also want to kind of avoid Pokemon with grassy terrain, something like a Rillaboom or a type of Bulu. They don't pair well. And the reason for that is because, yes, your recovery, you're getting recovery back from the terrain, which is nice, but Swampert prides itself on its bulk. The ability to take non-stab grass attacks, even in situations where you don't necessarily want to, but you kind of just have to. And the fact that there's the terrain boost that's giving it the one and a half times increase in power, you're not taking those hits anymore. That's a problem. So I would kind of avoid Rillabooms or Tapu Bulus when combining Swampert with those Pokemon. Other than that, you're looking at something like Buzzwool. Now, Buzzwool, you're saying, why Buzzwool? It resists grass, it hits things really hard, it's bulky as hell. I just believe there are better, cheaper options for Pokemon that can take advantage of grass types. Buzzwool, to me, just doesn't have it going for it as much as another option. Something like a Heracross, I think, is a bit better to pair with Swampert because it has the speed and it's pretty bulky in general. So all in all, yes, it's a good Pokemon. It's a okay pairing. I just think there are so many better options. That's why I wanted to mention Buzzwool in this spot. Let's go ahead and look at some team examples, starting off with OG Albina and the Mime Mens for the APA. We're looking at a team. This team has Mew on. It also has Gengar. It also has the Swampert and a Como that can use the Clangor Soul ability. So Swampert is able to form a really nasty momentum core with the Galar Moltres, with the Rotom, and able to flip turn into those Pokemon with relative ease until they can start breaking or sweeping or doing whatever they want to do. It's a really solid option. I think it's a great team all in all. 
Next up, we have my team from the BBR season number three. I've shown this team before in one of these builds for Urshifu, but Swampert, Moltres, all are there. We can flip turn or U-turn into Urshifu, into Raikou to set up, into the Metagross, into whatever I need and really start going to town. Anyways, that's it. In less than 10 minutes, you now know how to use Swampert. If you guys enjoyed the video, then do me a favor and leave a like on the video. It really helps the channel out a lot. And of course, comment down below too, which Pokemon you'd like to see next or what your thoughts are on Swampert. It helps the channel so much. If you want to vote on the next Pokemon, you can do so by following me on Twitter. That's where I post a poll for all the next votes I'm going to be having for this series. At the same time, guys, subscribe. Be great. You guys enjoyed the content. You made it to the end. I mean, so you must have enjoyed it. So uh, do me a favor. Do you a favor. Subscribe. It'd be great. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time.